Da, 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 da. Hi, welcome. Nice that they all came here, though it's nice weather. I think they also serve beer right now. Uh, thanks, nobody left. Uh, so, what we have right now is a cool feature. Will it scale? When success can harm you, a road trip of scaling. So, it's like risk versus solutions. Just a little bit things about me. Um, I'm a vegan. Uh, I built my first website in uh, 97, 97, so I know all the stuff with Internet Explorer 3, Netscape, and also I got all the pain. And so I started with Joomla 2006. With what? Joomla. What? Um, okay, I, I booked the, the pronunciation course of the coolest <laughs> content management system all around. Um, I'm really heavy into performance tuning of websites and I do uh, drama sessions since 2012. Um, I love fast websites, kettlebell, calisthenics, feats of strength, whiskey and straight razors. Yeah, that's basically about me, so, so not much more to say about that. Um, why I had this idea for the talk. So. I had a community website, or a client of mine, and with over 40,000 articles. Had a forum, also big frequented email newsletter. They made their revenue through affiliate sales and banners. Their roadmap to success, very simple. Relaunched with Jumbo 3 from previous two to, uh, to five versions, um, had a new template, new design, new features, got SEO check, also did more social media things. Fine, so good. The cost of that, okay, they, they, they paid a bunch of um, costly people to do that. Um, then they discovered it always took them longer and longer to save articles. Okay, no big deal. Loading time increased dramatically over to an average of <coughs> four, uh, 45 seconds before the page being loaded. Okay, not that good, but still got visitors. Oh, visitors decreased. Hmm, I wonder how this could be happening. Yeah. Why do we have a decrease in visitors when we have that long loading time? Ranking decreased also because loading time takes longer. Hmm. Eventually, you drop in ranking, and then even paid, uh, page load failures. So the whole page was not even loaded anymore, and total crash of the entire website. So they got to reboot the server to, to get it running again. So this is actually how you feel when the client calls you. Yeah, this is what the client thinks that you'll be doing. This is what you actually do. Click cash. Okay, it's not really that simple, but majorly for most of them it would be. So the thing is, how do I find the bottlenecks of a misperforming website? So. Let's go to the uh, user suspects, so we have Jumbo. <coughs> Do I use the latest version? Just cache enabled. Did I just minify and merge resources? Did I check out how big they are? If take for example Ysnow, yeah, to actually see what's being loaded, what's being shipped through the lines to the browser of the user. And maybe you also want to check the template version. Yeah. Some templates club really improve themselves with each version and if you have an older one, you may be stuck into something which has errors, bugs, and maybe worthwhile checking it out. And configuration of HD access. Uh, you can do with the configuration of the HD access amazing things. Setting a GZIP compression for things that are very good GZIPable like normal content, CSS files, fonts, um, SDGs, JavaScripts, 
works extremely well, and you can do that simply over HG access. Um, so, when you want to find the bottlenecks, we would use the uh, debug uh, mode from Jumbo. But we may not want everybody to see this. This is a very simple step. You're just searching through the plugins, debug, and then you set a user to that, so the debug information will not be displayed to everyone on the page. It's, it's, I think it's a little bit like stepping outside on the front lawn with no clothes on. You actually can do this, but maybe not always advisable, especially in rural areas. Um, so just put it on super admin or special or some lock in the front page, uh, lock in the front end of your website. And then you have the debug info and can check out what's happening without bothering uh, normal visitors with some strange message there. Uh, oh God, what does it mean? Loading time? The rivals? Yeah, so just keep it simple. Do not confront them with too much data. So debug menu, you got sessions, which is very good to find out about rights, ACL things, so you see what's going to be stored, which user level he is in, um, profile information, what component is loading on that specific page, and also the time and memory consumption that's been used. Memory usage total, if this is way, way, way up high and the site crashes, you, you really have to get rid of something, yeah, or get a more performance server. Uh, database queries, what's going to be triggered? And then you got also the log messages. This is if you want to go more deep into debugging, which gives you also ideas of um, PHP constructs, which or may not be that advisable anymore, and also about database queries, what you may be able to speed up. Usual suspects, server. So we got the PHP version. As we heard in Zev's talk, PHP 7 is just plainly awesome. No way around it. It's just oh, mind blowing. Cool. Apache Engine X versions. Okay. It's repeatable, yeah? So just use late, latest technology and most probably are fine. Database. And be aware of that your server can handle only so and so many simultaneous requests. Otherwise, it would just go down. So be aware of that. If you have that, you have to scale something. It can be configuration of the server, getting a higher package. And maybe it's just talking with uh, your internet service provider if you can change something. Yeah. But there's always a physical limit because most of the most of the sites do not perform that extremely well. They will never reach the normal default limit, so nobody realizes that there's actually a limit. It's like if, if we all want to go through the same time through that door, it will not work very good. Yeah? And if we are extremely unlucky, we all squeeze ourselves and no, nobody can get, get back and forth. Yeah? So just get, in this case, bigger doors. So to back server. You got an SSL certificate installed. It's prerequisite for HTTPD2. Um, so if there's something wrong with the certificate, it cause, can cause all kinds of different strange behaviors and problems. So just if you use it, which is good, which you should be using, make sure that everything's running fine and smooth with it. Um, just an example um, that you have uh, mixed uh, resources, some with SSL on the page and some without. Uh, can cause all kinds of fancy, fancy behavior. Not necessarily for the website to crash, but more for some users which are getting very, very strange messages and then lose trust on your website. Um, check the server error logs and Apache database logs. So some things which are not displayed by Jumbo, but being, you can see them in the server logs. And if there are too many server errors always triggered, this is not good. Yeah? And you just can see it if you really actually look at the logs do a little bit of research of it. 
Um, I had a client, it was like, oh, please, please fix my website. It's going, okay, this, 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 okay, we check it out. We need the server logs. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, we cannot provide that. I said, okay, you know, if I had to use a crystal ball, it's far more expensive. It's just try and error and see if it works out or not. Yeah, so otherwise we just would be know what we are doing and not just do what we are guessing. Uh, but he could not provide it and he was fine with it. But it's not a nice way to work that way. Yeah? Sure, you can do it, but it's really no fun. Uh, I love to be more efficient. Um, some things, if you're using Plus 12, for example, they have a nice updated feature. So you can see the server logs in real time. It's called protocols and then start real time update. So you can see the server logs as they're being written. There, which is quite nice, so you do not have to. Hmm? Have you tried Pink Milo? Pardon? Have you tried Pink Milo? Nope. Write that to me, I can put it on, on, the, on the slides okay. later. Thank you. <coughs> Please come to come, put, make a note for the questions, and then later, because I'm very, very good at mixed up on all different stuff, and then we are not getting anywhere. And I will not leave you on time before every the last slide has been shown. <laughs> okay, usual, usual suspects provided. I want a shard host. Is it a virtual server? Do you have a real server? Is it managed or so on? So just be aware where your website actually is. Is it, if you have a national business, like most of my clients are, they, they're just business in, in, most of the time also regional in, in Hamburg. It would be very bad advice if I said, oh, we got a very cheap and good advisor in the US. Yeah, because most of the clients are not in the US. So just have it in a, 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 a how do you say, data center here in Hamburg. Yeah, more performant. Um, that's the web space that you have. It doesn't have enough RAM, CPU. Uh, does it still uh, use hard disk drives or you use SSDs? Yeah, this is also um, basic requirements for, for, for serving uh, multiple websites fast. Yeah, so just um, the use of HTTP2. Uh, this is uh, um, new protocol which um, is being able to transfer more simultaneous requests at once. So with the old protocol and also browser implementation you had this only a certain number of files could be put over at once. Yeah? And so you can get around this a little bit. Um, you may want to use the CMD which uh, is very advisable if you have international clients but if you have just local clients for one region or one, one country, um, you may actually not perform that much better. Uh, what's being able to be used uh, is also on the um, JCAH Optimized Pro version. They got a kind of uh, is a content delivery emulation. So you can put all the static files to a subdomain. It works quite good, just be careful with fonts then you have a write into your HTTP access a font policy because otherwise the fonts will not be loaded from the static domain. So maybe also you want to re-evaluate re your provider. Yeah? Does your provider use the latest PHP version? And if not, why not? And can you update it? Sometimes it's just asking. And if you've got a bigger provider, I mean, you will not be tell everybody, oh, Tim, uh, uh, you know, we, there's a new PHP version out there. You should really try that one. <laughs> yeah, so, so it just works for very, very small businesses. So, so I might do that. <laughs> um, and if you're using PHP 7, just make sure that all your stand installed component actually can handle that. I had this with a, a small uh, kettlebell web shop that I use for kettlebell courses, so just for my private leisure. And I was, oh, PHP 7, oh, great, it's so fast. Yes! 15 minutes later, I got a call. Yeah, the shopping cart, yeah. Yeah, what's with it? 
I cannot check out. Oh, okay. Damn, it was incompatible. And I did not test it. My fault, my bad. Uh, just lucky that it was just me who was being hurt and not some customer. But just make sure, just um, also if, you, if you're upgrading to, to PHP 7, which you should um, calculate some testing time. Yeah. And also if the client gets more uh, revenue and a better page by changing to PHP 7, he should be also willing to pay you for that a little bit. Yeah. So he's sure that it's with yeah, no pain. Um, then you also can th think, is the package that I have still suited for me? And just do a quick calculation in your mind. What is the next bigger or twice as bigger package that you can get at your provider? And how much time do <coughs> you want to invest in debugging your website? Yeah. I mean, just think what a professional cost for five to eight hours investing, doing stuff, and then think about it, what it would cost for one or two years to, to buy a bigger package. Maybe you just want to go for a more performing package and pay a small amount to the web developer. GTD is also that. Proof-driven design is also that. So, and if you're going to be really big, uh, you have multiple servers, um, hardware load balancer or so on, this is very nifty stuff, but to be honest, I got no client who actually needed that at the moment. But I know for some analysis people, when they got uh, out a, a questionnaire to about, I think, 10,000 people that are being expected to do the survey between 9 and 10, you fucking need to know balance it because otherwise the whole shit will be burning down. The use of CMD or HTTP2. As I said before, if you're on an international basis, a CDN is very good because your files will be served everywhere on the planet relatively quick. But you may also consider getting HTTP2 if you're more on a, on a local business. So just a small thing. So you see here the demo of 200 pictures being built up with normal and there with HTTP2. So it's really quicker. And uh, I used now uh, a screen capturing from, 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 from a YouTube video because actually from, for me on, on my line, it's about one second to build up with, uh, with the HTTP. And it's instantly there with a HTTP2, but it's, it, it's really too short to actually see that, so I, I took that video. Um, just test it on a live server. What possibly could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so if, you, if you're doing some testing or configuration on your, on your live server, you must be really, really sure what you're doing here. <laughs> just Otherwise, maybe unexpected things happen, to put it in a nice way. So you may want to consider testing on a different server. So um, if you have a local machine, <coughs> do you still have the same problems or not? Then you can see where the differences are. Just make sure that you do also some stress test on the local machine at the same time. For example, taking Apache JMeter or some equivalent tool. So that it, the website's going to be hit yeah, while you do the testing, so you can see how it performs on the stress. Um, doing it on the live server is also a very, very nice idea, but you may get banned. Yeah, because they say it's a denial of service attack. Um, does the clone work with a different provider? Here we got Nicholas, uh, so I keep a backup. And so uh, you just do a backup of your, of, of your site, go to some trial version of some web space, <coughs> ramp it up there, see if it works. If it works beautifully, you've got two options. First, hey, I got a new provider. Second one is spot where the difference is. is uh, some libraries are allowed at the new server, which are not allowed at the, at the old one, which are right now at the moment. 
uh, does he have a different PHP version? Just check that out, just to have an idea. It's always very good if you have some data to, to, to figure out what's really going on. Uh, guessing is not really good. Um, yeah, to come back to that one client. Yeah, so better call, uh, someone call an exorcist for that website. And when you see the next stats, you can pretty know why I put on that picture of Duke Nukem. First glance, over 160 requests, 120 of them images, thumbnails, some not scaled. Um, a lot of the thumbnails not even being visible. They're being hidden be 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 because they had some, some tap browsing there. Um, no above the font loading. And I tell you, the front page was pretty long. You got bruises if you had it on a mobile phone while trying to reach a button. So it did an average of 150 database queries for the front page, and about 40, uh, yeah, about one third of them was redundant. No caching. The first load nearly, nearly took three megabytes, and um, some of the modules they've been using to display the content in a real nifty way, so like everything's being browsed on a, on, on a module being displayed on the right side of the, of the content, <coughs> which they duplicated three times for different categories, uh, took much of the whole process time of the database queries. And they had some modules with three really, really, really directs. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, okay, we got bad news, yeah, you just, you got module cancer. We got to take it out. Please tell me what modules you can go without. So I just want to know, what's, what do you think the client said? Oh, we need everything, of course. That's why we build it. <laughs> what the fuck did I ask? <laughs> I knew it was what happened, but I just had to do it. It's just, oh, the <coughs> stove hot? <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I do not know where that came from. <laughs> so, first steps of trying to slow the thing. We enabled caching, okay. No bad thing. We used a JCA optimized to, to mangle the resources. And I finally could uh, get him to, to just use 20 articles on the front page instead of 40. That was a tough one, lady. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and we found uh, newer uh, uh, versions of these heavy load modules which also had to prove it. So uh, we used a job cache, and which gave us also the uh, possibility to exclude banners in some affiliate programs, because it makes a revenue from that. So uh, actually, for that purpose, every, every click and whatever has to be tracked. So you do not want to cache that, or you kind of decrease your <coughs> cache. Um, by the way, uh, Jomla now has also um, the caching enabled that it can decide if it's a mobile website or a desktop PC. Or a desktop. So this is new, but uh, for the time of that, uh, we were not able to, to actually test that completely through. So I just have it here as a side note. Uh, maybe you can also get it perfectly fine without jet cache, job cache, just by using normal Jomla. Second thoughts. Um, it really worked great. Really <coughs> the site was considerably, considerably faster, so not that painful loading times. But the thing is, with this community site, 
So people log in to write on the forum. And so then we discovered once they're logged in, it slows down. It, not that it's not any usable anymore, but it's really, really slow. The problem is, once you have the registered user, he's not going to be cached anymore. And there's no way in Jomla around it. Yeah? So be, be certain. And the problem is, okay, so we had also another thing is, audit tweet uh, caused the server to <coughs> crash. Yeah? So we, we needed a bug fix for the component uh, because the problem was audit tweet was caused every time someone visited the page. Audit tweet was checking if something happens or should be happening. And then it ran also into a problem. So eventually the site crash crashed. And so um, I also got the time to, let's be honest, wouldn't it be enough just to trigger auto tweet with a cron job every 10 minutes? Okay, please. And that really fixed some of the problems. Yeah, just to not have it on a physical basis, which is also not very lean, clever way to do. So uh, it's actually better to have that on a cron job. Also, that you have also one page with all of your cron jobs and you can see what's happening uh, on, the, on the background, on the regular level. <coughs> So the problem is registered users are expecting, hey, I'm a registered, I'm, I'm a customer, I'm a king. Um, I should be served first. Um, problem is because caching is not a, a, able to work for them, it's not really happened. So it's, it's like a snail with a crown on. Yeah. But there's a small solution in here. Uh, in Jumbo 3, you have a new user group which is called guests. That's everyone who's not logged in. So you could set some of the heavy load modules to guests. Then if the user logs in, he will not see that modules. But this really depends on a, on a, on a, a fight for module basis uh, with the client, how things, how important it is. Huh? But it's it's a way around it. If you know, if you just skip all the, the, the content modules on the right side, which are heavily loaded for registered users, that might actually do the trick because then you have far less database queries to be done. For each um, Okay, the next thing, throw hardware at it. I also suggested it with the uh, websites. So you may also want to think. <coughs> Upgrade provider package. Use PHP 7 if applicable. And use the CDN uh, for static resources. Yeah. Potential bottlenecks. Navigation. Navigation, if it's not being able to be cached, please take that in and into account. Right now we'll be talking about things which we are not allowed to cache or not being able to cache. Uh, takes a relatively high overload. So you may want to consider, for example, if you got there a, a footer link with disclaimers for whatever, or imprint, uh, data policies, whatever. Um, maybe you just want to use that as a normal com content model <coughs> where you fake the navigation just by normal links in the text. Yeah? Because this works quicker than all the database queries that have been handled through normal navigation. I know this is not the most elegant solution, but it's the way around some more queries. Um, bridges. So if you've got forum bridges, shop, shop bridges, Google Calendar, stuff like this, uh, they uh, can cause a huge amount of overload. And if you have external resources, Twitter, Facebook, <coughs> like that, if they're not responding fast enough, um, your website slows down. So if you have tweets or so on that you, you also display on your page from your Twitter channel, um, for normal users, make sure that these things are going to be cached. But be also aware that for registered users that have been logged in, these things cannot be cached.
Yeah, so just have that in mind. Try that out if it works for you or not. And then maybe you put it to guest motors or just run with it. Yeah, but just have that in mind. Um, check the template that you'll be using. So best thing is if you have a basic idea what you want to have, and if you want to, what you want to do, and you've got content, and then you have maybe just two uh, template frameworks and then just benchmark them out on, on a higher load. Because uh, to be honest, some, 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 some templates, and <coughs> some modules that you'll be using, they are not built for high performance. Yeah. So if you can try that out in advance, it may be very worthwhile the additional effort than just taking one and then seeing, oh, it does not really work that out that well. Yeah. So also depends on the financial standing of the client that you have. But it may be really advisable to test that in advance before you go there. Because once you are there, they most probably be stick to it. So I had this uh, two times as a customer says, I know you're right, but we invested everything in that. And that's the way about how we absolutely want to have it. So they had to take a lot of mm, not that good solutions to be shipped with that. Yeah, because they are not willing to change templates. Though we could also prove that the other one would be working faster for them. Um, so very nice. So you got one item you have to ditch. Moderate cost, high performance, tons of features. Yeah? If you got moderate cost, high performance, you will not have a ton of features. If you have tons of features, high performance, you will have higher costs. Yeah? Just have that in mind. Summary. Update everything. Check genre, system information, PHP, databases, web server. Check what's being actually loaded on which page. What can be thrown out or reduced? Does it benefit my re revenue or not? If it, my revenue does not benefit, out. Um, keep in mind that registered users are not being cached. Use recent technology, PHP 7, content delivery networks, HTTP 2. Test your website. And this is what you always have to do. Test, 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 test if it's still working. Um, like the one example that I said with the shop component not being comp compatible to PHP 7. Uh, use debug motors to evaluate the loading time. Check the server error logs. So, we're finally there, so, so, so there's enough time for, for questions. Um, we also have here a checklist that you can download or look at the website. Um, it's about basic manual, if, if the performance of your website sucks, what I'm going to do. Yeah, so, so, oh man, okay, I tried out this, <coughs> oh no, I, I did not tr tr try that one out. So let's check it if it improves. Yeah? And you can have the link, uh, you have the text also on the website and you can also download it as PDF. If you have questions, please go. Was if, 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 if I disabled the uh, or set the banners to guests, to, 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 guests so to disable the banners for registered users? No, of course not, of course not because it would cut down the revenue. Okay. Because I was thinking about it. Yes. Because no, we, we, we were setting some of the high load uh, content uh, display modules on uh, guests. So we would have less database queries, but not uh, affiliate programs or not banners because
they were doing the, um, uh, how's it, the revenue for the site. And also, if you got registered users, they are more prone to, to, to buy something through your site because they, you always have some, you already got some trust on them. Yeah, because otherwise if they would not trust you, they would not res register. And so, <laughs> yeah, sneaking that on me. Okay, um, further questions? Were they actually using common banners? Pardon? Were they actually using common banners, the built-in banners component from others? No, they were using a, a different banner component. It depends on, um, you can easily use combiners, it depends how many visitors you have and how much revenue you make from that. I had a, a, a big uh, doctor's community and they had also banners, but they were not making any revenue of that. This was more banners for their, um, I'd say, uh, uh, um, journal, yeah, being shipped to all. The, the members, I mean, over 4,000 people, but okay, um, so they had banners in for that journal, so the people said, oh, it's an interesting article or something like this. Yeah, but it, with the traffic that they had on the website, it would not be really a wise investment to, to search for a better banner, banner component because it was doing fine, it was loading fast, and was not much traffic on it. Yeah, so it really depends on the case. Um, actually, I did not have a choice there. He was using it, it was established, and that was it. And I was fine with it. It was working for him, and he had bigger problems than the container, uh, than the banner component. Further questions? Okay. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes. If you, if you look at the breakdown of the request, you see that you spend much time uh, actually resolving the DNS. Yes. So it's getting less and less. If you have a good CDN, then it's probably not fine. Uh, if you're using HTTP2, you have less requests, so it's less than fine. This, this but if you're still not using that, then it's easy to fix, especially with uh, international customers. You just find a DNS supplier that has any cap DNS caps. Uh, sorry? How much? There are several. Okay. The price we have on the H, yeah. uh, it's a one euro per euro, I think, option. You level that, and then your DNS becomes faster. It's the same thing as a CDN. They just have, instead of having your DNS from one single server somewhere, it's just spread out over the world. And, and if you look at the breakdown with Google page tests, you realize you actually sometimes spend a lot of time just doing DNS. Yes. Okay. So that's it's really cost almost nothing to That's incorrect. Like DNS is an issue, but it's an issue you will have once every two deal. No, no, no. So no. 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 with every request each time to no. load page. The browser, your browser and your computer, and there are two caches in there, will catch that DNS. So on your computer it will see first on your browser cache. Which IP you have to go to? If that's empty, it will go to your computer. Then it will go to your EPSP, and then it will go to a computer. So there are multiple layers in between. Obviously, having any cache or having something that is in place like Amazon Route 43 or DNS maybe, yes, it will speed up. But, but if, if okay, okay, say, so, so if, if, if you're really hunting for the first byte. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's really important. And I, 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 I mean, fast loading websites are my porn. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it has to be fast. Yeah, the website has to be fast, instant has to be there. Um, so it's really worth checking that out. But this was not the problem in our case. So. Yeah, no, but, but, yeah, but actually, yes, this is right. About casting, if a component really wants, 
can cast for uh, loading users, uh, not on a user level, but based on the uh, the user groups they belong to. It is possible, but it is documented as everything else. Okay, uh, yes. I, ju I, ju I, ju I only bumped into it by accident. Yes, I, I heard this just from, from uh, was talking with Brian, and he also said, okay, Robert, try to, to, to work th some things out, and then they just said, okay, we drop it for the moment because the results were horrible. Yeah, so I'll just... Um, when it's doable, and you can actually load the modules, many times it's the modules that are changing, so you can load them with the Okay. So you Thank you. 